Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have x squared plus x plus 1 squared divided by x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1, and that's equal to 7 thirds. We're going to be solving for x values, and let's see how we can solve this in different ways. So my first approach would be just to expand everything. So we're going to get 3 times x squared plus x plus 1 squared. Remember the formula for a plus b plus c squared. That is x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x. And then that is equal to 7 times x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. All right, let's go ahead and combine like terms here. We have x squared plus 2x squared, and that's going to be 3x squared. And if you distribute it, you're going to get 3x to the fourth plus 6x cubed, and then plus 9x squared plus 6x plus 3, and that's equal to 7x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 7. Let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side. Subtract, you get 4x to the fourth minus 6x cubed, 7 minus 9 minus 2x squared minus 6x minus 4. Actually, that's a plus 4 because 7 minus 3 equals 0. Everything is um, divisible by 2 divide and you'll get a quartic equation. And can this quartic equation be solved? Probably. You can use the quartic formula, you can use the rational root theorem, lots of different things, right? And you can pretty much look at factors of 2 divided by factors of 2, kind of like all possibilities like plus minus 1, plus minus 2, divided by plus minus 1, plus minus 2. And when you look at all these choices, one of these should work, right? How about testing one half? Okay, that's just because one half comes from one and two here. And if you just test it out, one over 16, minus three times one over eight, minus one fourth, minus three halves plus two, that's gonna give us one over eight, minus three over eight, minus two over eight, minus uh, 12 over eight, plus 16 over eight. So I turned everything into eight so that we can easily, um, you know, add and subtract. This is gonna be 16 plus uh, 117 minus 3 plus 2 plus 12 is also 17 and yes that's 0. So x equals 1 half is a solution that we found 1 and you can divide by that but you could also keep looking for other solutions and you're going to realize yes there's another rational solution. I'm going to leave this as incomplete and you can definitely go ahead and check all for other solutions. We don't have too many options here. Obviously, another one we would be checking would be minus one half, and then you also have the plus minus one, plus minus two, and I think that's pretty much it, right? So you're gonna test all these and then find out which ones will work, okay? So this is pretty much the first approach, rational root theorem. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is actually cooler. All right. So the second method involves the following. Let's rewrite our equation. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that the expression is x squared plus x plus 1 and x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 are actually connected. How? You might be asking, well, if you think about x to the fourth plus x squared plus one, I can just add x squared and subtract it, can't I? I mean, what difference would it make? Well, it would make a huge difference because now this becomes x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one minus x squared. And then the expression inside the parentheses is a perfect square. Do you see what I see? It's x squared plus one squared. And then this is just x squared. Therefore, we get a difference of two squares, which we can factor as x squared plus 1 plus x times x squared plus 1 minus x. Great. So the quartic at the bottom is factorable. Let's go ahead and do it. So we have x squared plus x plus 1 squared divided by x squared plus x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. And this is equal to 7 thirds. And now one of these will cancel out. And guess what? We're going to end up with a quadratic. Great. Let's go ahead and cross, uh, cross multiply. 7x squared minus 7x plus 7 equals 3x squared plus 3x plus 3, 
put everything on the same side, 4x squared minus 10x plus 4 equals 0. It kind of looks like the first approach where we divided everything by 2, but that was a courting and solving it obviously was more laborious. This one is fairly easy, divide everything by 2 just to get smaller numbers, and then this is your equation. And both solutions should work because if you look at the original problem, there's nothing that makes the denominator 0. Notice that both of these expressions uh, are quadratics with negative discriminants, okay? Actually, they're associated with cube roots of 1 and negative 1. That's another story, which kind of helps you solve the problem. But anyways, if you uh, take a look at this problem, you, you're going to realize uh, this can be factored as 2x minus 1 and x minus 2. Make sense? Because we get the 4x uh, and uh, uh, x, which gives us 5x, which is with a negative. Make sense? Okay, and of, of course you could do this with x method or use the discriminant to find solutions and then go to the factors. Well, our goal is to find solutions, doesn't matter. You're going to uh, find the x equals 1 half and x equals 2 from here. And you're going to realize that both of these solutions work. But are those the only solutions because we got rid of something, right? We basically assume that x squared plus x plus 1 cannot be 0 because we divided by that. But what happens if it's equal to 0, right? That's a good question. And well, if this expression is equal to 0, then we're going to get complex solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. They're going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be square root of 3i divided by 2. And if you want, you can write these in polar form or use Euler's formula, so on and so forth. But that's pretty much what the other solutions are. So we got four solutions, 2, 1 half, and these two. Make sense? Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method, which is kind of also cool in my opinion and the third method actually uses a very important idea we're going to divide the top and the bottom by x squared but when you divide something by x squared you are actually dividing by x inside because we have a square on the outside and here it's just going to be dividing by x squared so we're basically dividing by x squared right and then inside we get x plus 1 plus 1 over x squared and at the bottom, we get x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared. Here's the tricky part. Substitution. If you go ahead and call this plus this something, so I'm going to set x plus 1 over x equal to t. And from here, I get t plus 1 squared multiplied by 3. Let's cross multiply at the same time. And this is going to be t squared minus 2, because if you square t, you're going to get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals t squared, and this is going to be t squared minus 2. Make sense? And that will be multiplied by 7, 7 times t squared minus 2. If you go ahead and distribute this, you're going to get 3t squared plus 6t plus 3 equals 7t squared minus 14. Again, putting everything on the positive side, 4t squared minus 6t minus 17 equals 0. Okay. Now, we multiply 3 by t plus 1 squared and 7 by t squared. Actually, we forgot one thing. Um, sorry about that. This is t squared minus 2 plus 1. I forgot to add this one here. So it's going to be t squared minus 1, and that's definitely going to make a huge difference. Let's go ahead and erase this. Uh, it doesn't look good anyways. So this is going to be minus 1, and we're going to get 3t squared plus 6t plus 3 equals 7t squared minus 7, and then 4t squared minus 6t minus 10 equals 0. And if you divide by 2, you get 2t squared minus 3t plus 5 equals 0. And this is factorable again as 2t minus 5 multiplied by t plus 1 equals 0. You should know that because 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3, uh, negative 1 is a possible solution. Not possible. Negative 1 is a solution. And then from there, you can find the other factor. Make sense? But this is t values. t is 5 over 2, and t is negative 1. But what is t? t is x plus 1 over x. And notice that a number plus its reciprocal is 1 half. There are two solutions for this, 2 and 1 half, because obviously if x is a solution, 1 over x is also a solution. And this one gives you the complex solutions we just talked about. And what were they? They were these two complex solutions. All righty. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.